The movie begins on a large deserted island in the middle of nowhere. The isolated area is surrounded by a vast ocean that borders its sides with no means of escape. A young woman named Zoa wakes up stranded on the island's shores with no recollection of what happened in the last 12 hours. Frustrated, she explores the island, searching for any sign of human life. A few minutes later, Zoa finds an empty bottle lying on the sand. On picking it up, she gets a flashback to the events that led to her isolation. The scene suddenly shifts to one week ago when it all began. Back in the city, Zoa returns home after a long day of work and exchanges pleasantries with her younger sister Gabby. Moments later, she settles into bed and is stunned to receive a strange message from an unknown number. Zoa is immediately suspicious of the text but goes against her instincts and decides to reply to the mystery number. Upon questioning, the anonymous texter reveals that they are the correspondent of a new beverage company named Eden and informs Zoa that she has been selected to attend the company's launch party. The the mystery texter explains that the event is an all-expenses-paid trip to a remote island and promises to be a lot of fun. Zoe is fascinated by the offer and quickly welcomes it as she grins at the idea of attending a free island party. Her Nigerian prince will probably even greet her when she arrives. However, before accepting the offer, the correspondent tables a set of guidelines that she must follow. 1. Do not reveal the event's location to a second party. And 2 do not bring anyone along. Zoa finds the rules quite sketchy, but agrees to them for fear of losing her invitation. The following weekend, she packs her bags and makes her way to the pickup station. Despite agreeing to the company's rules, Zoa brings her best friend Judith along as the duo heads to the secret location. On arrival, they meet a fellow invitee named Aldo, and together, the trio gets led to an abandoned building by an automated drone. Eventually, the mini aircraft leaves them and the group is left facing a locked door. Seconds later, a mask man appears and lets the trio inside the building, where they find and socialize with other invitees. Fortunately, they don't have to wait long as an envoy of party buses arrives to take them to the island. The guests swiftly race into the vehicles and spend the night dancing as they approach their destination. Several hours later, they finally arrive at a seaport as the masked organizers usher them to a boat. However, before the invitees can enter the cruise, they're made to pass through a verification checkpoint. Judith flinches on seeing this as she doesn't have an invite, but approaches the checkpoint nonetheless. Thankfully, her gamble pays off, as she is allowed to join the company despite lacking an invite. The guests are all thoroughly searched and are even made to pass a metal detector as a precautionary measure. In addition, they are also ordered to drop their phones as a prerequisite for entering the boat. The partygoers instantly find this very suspicious, but eventually succumb to the organizers' demands as they surrender their cell phones to them. After all the arrangements have been made, they all board the boat and begin their trip to the vacation island. Island. About an hour later, they finally arrive at their destination and are each given a wristband by the ushers. Once settled, they begin partying and spend the night drinking and dancing. During the event, Zoa runs into a guy named Daniel and the duo instantly hits it off. Amidst the festivities, the head organizer Astrid makes a grand announcement. She reveals that 100 guests were invited to the launch party. However, the beverage company randomly selects only 5 of the 100 attendees to try their new energy drink. The selected candidates include Africa, Ebon, Charlie, Aldo, and Zoa. The five guests are individually handed the mystery drink, and each one quickly gulps it and returns to partying. Meanwhile, Judith searches the crowd for Zoa and eventually finds her way to a tent on the island's shores. There, she sees two of the organizers attacking and drowning a man in a water barrel. She is instantly spooked by this and races off to continue her search for Zoa. On the other end of the island, Zoa, having a terrible reaction to the mystery drink, wanders in a circle as she hallucinates. She eventually makes her way to the top of a high cliff and is seconds away from falling when a strange man appears and saves her. Zoa continues hallucinating and shortly after, passes out as she spends the night asleep on the cliff. Right then, we return to the movie's start. Zoa wakes up alone and wanders the island in search of any inhabitants. Fortunately, she finds the other four hand-picked guests who tried the mystery drink, and together they explore the island for clues. After hours of searching, they realize the rest of the guests have left on the boat, thus leaving them alone on the island. As they try to figure out their next move, a drone appears, which leads them to a mansion on the opposite end of the island. 
Islands. There, they are shocked to discover a village of island inhabitants governed by Astrid, the head organizer. She welcomes the stranded group to the modern civilization and explains that they were unfortunately left behind by the company's boat. However, she assures them of the vessel's return and offers them a place to live while they wait. Zoa is relieved to hear this but is left worrying about Judith. Meanwhile, each of the five guests is deployed to a different apartment where they share the space with the other inhabitants. Zoa swiftly makes her way to her allocated apartment and meets her new roommates Claudia and Nico, who turns out to be the strange guy that rescued her the night before. Zoa thanks him for coming to her aid, and the duo instantly hits things off, while a quiet Claudia merely stares at them from a distance. The following day, the group inquires about the boat's arrival. Much to their dismay, they are informed that the boat can't land ashore, as the tides are too strong. Though disappointed, most of them believe this and enjoy their stay on the island. However, a distrustful Aldo grows suspicious of the island's activities and becomes weary of the organizers. In the following scene, Zoa spots one of the island's inhabitants named Orson and finds him eerily familiar. Upon pondering, Zoa realizes that he was with Judith on the night of her arrival. Concerned, she closely follows and questions him about Judith's whereabouts. However, Orson denies meeting Judith and displays an aggressive nature, which makes Zoa even more concerned about her friend's safety. Moments later, Orson walks away while Zoa runs to the central mansion. There, she is shocked to see all the island's inhabitants engaging in a therapy exercise. Upon her arrival, Astrid spots and invites her to join the exercise. A skeptical Zoa is hesitant about joining the program, but with some cajoling, eventually agrees to do it. The head organizer asks Zoa a series of questions about her childhood, her family, and her past trauma, causing her to reveal some of her deepest secrets. It turns out that Zoa had a rough childhood, as her mom was a heroin addict, while her dad was absent for most of her life. Hence, she was single-handedly tasked with caring for her younger sister Gabby. At the end of the session, Zoa feels relieved as Astrid hugs and comforts her with a slew of kind words. The next morning, the group is informed that the boat will arrive the following day to take them home. The guests are pleased to hear the news, but Aldo remains suspicious of the inhabitants and decides to leave the island on his own terms. Meanwhile, the rest of the group mingles and settles seamlessly with the locals. Zoa quickly gets attached to Nico, while Ebon shares a bond with a resident after the duo plays a melancholic piece on a piano. That night, Astrid and her husband, Eric, throw a farewell party to celebrate their guest's impending departure. While the rest of the islanders party all night, Aldo plods the terrain and discovers a cargo boat, offloading shipment at the shores. Aldo takes this as his chance to escape and rushes back to the party to inform the others. He only manages to find Charlie and tells him about his plan. However, an intoxicated Charlie dismisses him, leaving Aldo with no choice but to escape alone. He swiftly returns to the island's shores and swims to the boat. Once aboard, he hides amongst the cargo and heaves a sigh of relief as he falls asleep. Hours later, Aldo is woken up by the sound of the boat's engine failing. He quickly makes his way to the upper deck and is startled to find one of the islanders staring at him. On her instruction, Aldo falls to his knees and fearfully stares at her. Without hesitation, she whips out a gadget and uses it to pierce Aldo's skull, thus instantly killing him as she returns with his corpse to the island. Right then, it is revealed that the island and its inhabitants are all members of a cult, with Astrid being their leader. She instructs the locals to entice the guests with their charm to have them remain on the island forever. The next morning, Zoa freshens up as she prepares for the boat's arrival. Excited to return home, she heads out in search of her fellow guests. However, she quickly discovers that Aldo is missing and informs the others. On hearing the news, Charlie recalls his encounter with Aldo the previous night and tells Zoa about his escape plan. The revelation greatly troubles Zoa and makes her wary of the locals as she increasingly anticipates her departure from the island. Meanwhile, Astrid's plans to charm the guests into staying were already in action. Due to the locals' influence, Africa and Ebon decide to remain on the island and each sign a contract binding them to the cult. Back in the city, Gabby worries about her sister's disappearance and enlists the help of their addict mother. Fortunately, the duo gets in touch with a police officer who files a missing person report on Zoa. However, this doesn't accomplish much as the police fail to take proactive steps to find her. Frustrated, Gabby tries to convince her mother to take a more drastic approach, but is merely ignored. Gabby swiftly reaches her breaking point and checks Zoa's room for clues about her whereabouts. There, she finds her phone and sees a text from a guy named Daniel, who happened to meet Zoa on the Eden trip. Daniel recounts his encounter with Zoa and tells Gabby all about the invite and the journey to the deserted island. Gabby is intrigued by this and eventually schedules a meeting 
meeting with Daniel in hopes of finding her sister. In the following scene, the Islanders reconvene for their periodic therapy session. This time, Charlie is handpicked to share his story. Just like Zoa, he is initially skeptical about joining the session, but is eventually coerced by Astrid to open up. Charlie talks at length about his estranged relationship with his family, especially his mother, due to the loss of his baby sister. It turns out that she died in a drowning accident when they were kids due to his negligence. Hence, his mother has hated him ever since and hardly ever spoke to him. Hearing this, Astrid consoles Charlie. However, before she can continue the session, Zoa sees through her antics and has a fiery outburst. She calls Astrid out for manipulating them into staying and accuses the locals of lying about the boat's arrival. Eventually, Nico pulls an angered Zoa away from the group and asks her to meet him later that night if she wishes to discover the truth about the island. Zoa is perplexed by his explanation but agrees to see him later that day. At nightfall, Nico leads her to an underground cave and shows her a corpse lying on a wooden structure. Upon inspection, Zoa is horrified to discover that the dead body on the pile is actually Judith's. The episode ends with Zoa erupting into a scream as tears trickle down her cheeks. To see what happens next, watch the second part in Series Recapped.